Okay, I'm here. This is John Gold. I'm here with Bob McElveen. Um, he lost his son Bobby on 9-11. Uh, he's been one of the most outspoken individuals from the family members. Um, I have a couple questions. First, um, I guess what was your initial reaction after you found out that the Bush administration did not want to create the commission? Well, I sort of expected that. Uh, it, it's sort of mind-boggling at the time because it was such an emotional time. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, I guess I was naive to honestly believe that something was going to happen from this. So the fact that he tried to stop it, it sort of reinforced my belief that, geez, they had to have something to do with this. Right. There's obviously they want a lot of information not to come out. And therefore, when the commission, I did a lot of work with the 9-11 you know, mm -hmm. families, but they deserve all the credit for it. I just, I was there throughout the commission, but they really deserve so much credit to be able to go through that mandate by Bush and convince the congressman to uh, right. convene with it. And then I was so optimistic about the, the commission itself because it, more or less they went against the Bush administration. So I expected something like that from Bush, but then I thought it was a very positive thing because geez, we're seeing some independence here where they are going to form the commission right. against the wishes of the President of the United States. So. What, uh, what piece of information finally convinced you that the government orchestrated 9-11? Well, actually orchestrating, uh, let me just briefly talk about the 9-11 uh -huh. commission. Two, two different points when Mueller testified, the FBI headed Mueller, uh, there was a point where I just finally said, I'm giving up on this. Obviously, the 9-11 Commission is a sham. And another time, I had to come to Lisa Rice. So th at those two times, I realized that we're not going to get any information. And I think it was at that time that I said, this is all set up. And then recognizing the fact it was set up, I just intensified my research. And I just felt then that we were deeply involved in it. I still at that time, though, I wasn't 100% sure that we, quote, orchestrated it the administration were right. frustrated. But knowing how the world works, they were involved in it. Again, letting it happen, uh, facilitating, I think facilitating is a better word, believing in facilitating right. by looking the other way. So when I felt that it was orchestrated, I, I don't know exactly, but I'd say within the last year, or right after the 9-11 Commission book came out, because you know, I was on TV a few times, and. And so, I, I was more or less convinced after that. So basically from this point on, that will be your message. That, Whenever you have the opportunity to speak, that will be your message. That will always be my message now. I never had that message uh, because I wasn't 100% sure. Right. But that's why you hope the 9-11 Commission would bring something out, which it never did. And I guess it's just, it, it, it's a tough thing to say that the government orchestrated the death of your son. What do you think yeah. about the um, able danger hearings? I don't think anything. I went to the first hearing, I guess I think it was back in September, and I, I admired what Weldon's trying to do. Mm -hmm. I admired Schaefer, I don't know, if Klein, I knew Klein, Klein Smith, I don't know if he was one of the others that were at the commission at that hearing with Spectre. But just knowing what happens in our administration, what, just knowing what happens in the Iran-Contra Commission, mm -hmm. what happened in the 9-11 Commission, mm -hmm. they are not going to allow pertinent information to come out. I think the best that might come out of this, and Weldon might feel good, the American people might feel good, is that a couple people in the Pentagon knew about it and never told us. Right. And, and that's the best. And then it's sort of, it's sort of a whitewash. Then, well, oh, geez, look what we're doing. Now it's over. This is what happened. Right. But false the, closure. It, well, of course, that's, that's what the 9-11 Commission was, especially false. And it has worked because no one wants yeah, to talk about it. Even the 9-11 families, they just do not want to talk about it. What do you, yeah. about the 9-11 families, um, they could be th probably one of the most powerful organizations in this country if they would get together um, with a single message. But I, I know that that's hard to do. I mean, within the 9-11 truth movement, it's hard to do. Um, is there any hope that people like the Jersey Girls will come forward and... And, and, and say exactly what you're saying, essentially. I, I, you know, again, I don't want to speak for them. I really wish right. it would happen. But, I, you know, I have support groups. I, you know, I've been around so many 9-11 people. And 
I won't criticize them, but the pain you go through living with this every day, right. like I'm not working, I don't have children to raise. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a lot easier for me, yet you can't believe how difficult it is for me. I do get depressed. I don't take medicine or anything, but I just get so down where I, where I can't constantly read this. And the fact that I've evolved into this point to actually believe that they murdered my son. This kid was a superstar. They were all superstars. I, I, can't, I can't imagine what that must feel. I, I honestly, I can't. I, I, for me, 9-11 was traumatic. I, I, I drove around that day for two hours. Uh, thinking about the complacency that the American people have, uh, that, that everybody in the world loves us, and then that that the event took place. But um, anyway, it, what do you do? You think there's hope? Uh, no, I don't see any hope. Really? I hate to say, it. I just don't see any hope. And that's because and of because well, all right, number one in 9/11 people, mm. they it's you never have closure. But at least you want to eliminate the press, the speculation, the conspiracy theories and all that. That, mm -hmm. hey, i got to move on in life because a lot of these people, Jersey girls, they have children to raise. They're part of families. And you just cannot do this every day. The work that they put into that was just mind-boggling to come up with 300 and some questions. Oh, my God. And then the disappointment of that 9-11 commission. So it's a, and then as far as people in the United States, you know, it just, it's five years, and the government's very good at this. And the fact that they use a lot of 9 11 Commission report and they put closure on the whole thing, it's been stamped, everything's good. It's in a black hole now, and, and to get that out, it's going to be very difficult. I hope to write a book, but I know a book's not going to. The only reason I want to write a book is that my relatives will see it. Right. So I, I want to pass it down in history, that at least I was so involved in this history, and I want the people, maybe 100 years, 50 years from now, to at least get the truth from well, my perspective. You, you, you don't want the so-called winners to write the history this time around. Well, I, I, you know, I want to write the history because exactly. I believe this is the truth. So personally, this will give me some satisfaction. Like, I, I do feel better about things just for myself. And I have to think of my family. So I will write this book. If it ever does get out, fine. If it doesn't, I'll publish it myself and give it to my friends. You know, and... But at least some people will know what the truth is, and they can read it. And well, it's definitely a book I will read, and I uh, thank you for your time, Bob, sure. and talk to you later.